Good evening. Welcome to Bible study with Hans and Dan. It is Monday, February 15th. We're glad you are joining us. And uh, we continue to reschedule some aspects of our church's <laughs> yes. life. Uh, we hope to have a business meeting this Sunday uh, about adult day. So if it's been a while since you watched all those adult day videos mm -hmm. that we uh, created, go back and watch them. But uh, we're going to do that this Sunday. Tell us about how things are at the Culpeper. Oh, we are so excited. We are finally getting to open things up a little bit. We've had some good tests. We have... Uh, everybody has gotten their shots, their second shots now, and so we're getting to open things up this yeah. week, and we're so excited yeah, about that. Yeah, getting some people back in the dining room. Yes. I have heard yes. about that, so that's good. <laughs> that's real good. Um, and while you're watching this, uh, tonight our leadership council is meeting, and also our 20-something group is meeting. So we had a huge group for 20-something last week. That was uh, really exciting. They're doing a relationship goals uh, study kind of building on your sermon from yesterday and uh, they're doing great. So be praying for those groups as they gather tonight. We are continuing on with 2 Corinthians. This is session 11, mm -hmm. which means we are near mm -hmm. the end. We yep. can see it. So if you want to tell us what you'd like to study next, we'd be all ears because we'd like to hear from you. We're going to be in chapter 10 tonight and I'm going to begin with verse 7. You are judging by appearances. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave, gave us for building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. I do not want to seem to be trying to frighten you with my letters. For some say his letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he's unimpressive and his speaking amounts to nothing. Such people should realize that what we are in our letters, when we are absent, we will be in our actions when we are present. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond proper limits, but will confine our boasting to the sphere of service God himself has assigned to us, a sphere that also includes you. We're not going too far in our boasting as would be the case if we had not come to you. For we did not get as far as, as you with the gospel of Christ. Neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand. And so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. For we do not want to boast about our work already done in someone else's authority. But let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. One of the real problems that they had in Corinth that we also have in our day is how they evaluated each other. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they evaluated Paul by the worst possible interpretation of his actions and his words and everything. And, and, <laughs> and when you do that, you can ascribe all kinds of bad things. Right to somebody else. And so um, Paul's critics are just, they're excellent at doing that, mm -hmm. just ascribing the very worst to Paul. And Paul's saying, you look at the outward appearance of things. Let's look a little deeper to the inward part. When we only look at the outside, we're missing a whole lot in our evaluation of each other. You know, it's obvious that these were Gentiles that had not known Paul's future, previous right. life, because he was known very differently among his Jewish friends. Right. And they were, uh, they were really good at putting authority into their feelings mm -hmm. and what they thought and they felt while questioning everything about Paul's right. feelings and authority. Um, and so Paul's saying, if you want to claim all that authority, uh, and we're going to see this really in the, in the next little bit, if you want to get into a resume contest, <laughs> let, let's have it, right? He's got that covered. Let's have it. Let, I'll, I'll win that one. And Paul says, my authority in verse 8 is based on the work that has been done, that, that, that I've accomplished. Right. Um, what is your authority based on? Uh, and he says he's built this church up, and he had. And, and they were a growing church, and, and yet Paul's critics were tearing down the church. Mm -hmm. And again, we still see too much of that. Right. Oh, um, yes. You know, people's authority is gained by how they diminish the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, at some point, we got to get past that. And that's what Paul's dealing with here yeah. uh, with the Corinthian church. Um, 
and he talks about his letters as further strength mm -hmm. of his authority. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if his letters were irrelevant, they could have just thrown them away. Clearly, right. they were responding to his authority that was in his letters. Right. Um, in verses 12 through 16, he, he starts to talk about the boundaries of this authority. Um, the Corinthians measured their authority through themselves. Mm -hmm. And they, so they said, you know, I, I feel good about it. It must be so. And they, they judge the standards by, the, by how they do it. Um, and, you know, it's kind of what you and I have experienced throughout our, our ministry. You go to any church that could be in the greatest disarray, and you go in and meet with them, and they think, they're doing all right. right. Yep. Doing it. We're a friendly church. <laughs> yes. And it's like, yes. by, by whose standard? <laughs> and that's kind of what Paul's saying in verse is 12 through 16. And Paul's saying, my authority has, has been granted by God himself. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Damascus Road, uh, God set me apart to do this work. And he hasn't overlorded it with them. Right, right. Um, and, uh, and Paul says that not only do I have authority in Corinth or I have a mission in Corinth, I have a mission beyond you all. Mm -hmm. um, God's called me to preach to the world, really, to the regions beyond you. Um, and it's, it's interesting to me that idea that Paul kind of breaks out here is that Paul's saying the church at Corinth, their, their faith needs to grow right. so that his ministry can expand, mm -hmm. so the, the, the mission can enlarge. Um, and if Paul has to consistently keep showing up at Corinth yeah. to put out fires, then he can't get where God's calling him to, to it's go. amazing that he didn't just leave them and go elsewhere right. anyway. Right. But he is committed to them. He, you know, and it's it's a parental love, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we need to ask ourselves the question that we don't ask ourselves a lot. Can our disobedience hinder the work of God? Now, so often I hear, oh, well, God's just going to do what he's going to do. But sure. it appears to me what Paul's saying mm -hmm. is the disobedience of the Corinthian church is hindering the mission that God's put mm -hmm. out there. And so we often say, well, we're just in our little part of the world, but, but our disobedience here could be impacting the mission of Christ, not only in the Culpeper right. community, right. but throughout the world. Right. And, uh, he wants to make that very clear to them. Um, Paul's vision was captured by the world. Um, and I often say that, that when a church gets captured by the mission of God for the world, then, then anything's possible. Right. But often the conversations in churches are so small mm -hmm. because our vision is so small. Right. And, uh, and I think this pandemic has, has given us a chance to evaluate what that mission is. And unfortunately for some, it has really narrowed their vision even more. Right, yeah. right. Um, but Paul is basically, and it, it we'll keep going with this, uh, he says, if you want to boast, okay, <laughs> but boast in the Lord. Right. Right, don't boast in yourself. And, uh, and I think that's a, that's a good word for us. Let's boast in what the Lord is doing in our lives and the mission he has given us. So keep us going um, over in chapter 11. All right, in chapter 11, it starts out with, I hope you will put up with me in a little foolishness. Yes, please put up <laughs> with me. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere, pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. I do not think... I am in the least inferior to those super apostles. I may indeed be untrained as a speaker, but I do have knowledge. We have made this perfectly clear to you in every way. Was it a sin for me to lower myself in order to elevate you by preaching the gospel of God you to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by receiving support from them so as to serve you. And when I was with you and needed something, I was not a burden to anyone, for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied what I needed. I have kept myself from being a burden to you in any way 
and will continue to do so. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, nobody in the regions of Achaia will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I do not love you. God, God knows I do because I love you. God knows I do. And I will keep on doing what I am doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masqueraded as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Paul puts the focus back on the Corinthian church, takes it off of himself, and he pictures the church as his child. Right. And he is trying to guard them against the danger of false teachers and false learning. And, and so he's trying, as a parent would, to help guide them along and care for them. Uh, the danger of false teaching there in verse 3, sometimes we give way more credit to Satan yeah. than he deserves. And that's what he says here. Right. If, if you want to be deceived, mm -hmm. um, it's easy to find somebody who can give you that path. What you're and, looking uh, for, yeah. And then we fall back and, oh, Satan, Satan. And, and I think we need to be, be careful about that, yes. right? Uh, yes, our, our disobedience will find a teacher. Right, and, and Paul said, you know, you so easily are right. swayed. It, right. They weren't hanging right. to what they were taught by That's him. Right. Uh, and false teachers put an emphasis on themselves. Right. And Paul says over and over again, whenever he talks about himself, he says, I boast in yeah. the gospel. Right. I boast in Christ. And if you're going to boast, boast in Christ. Right. And so, you know, those false teachers are putting the emphasis elsewhere. Paul uh, wants to not overwhelm them right. with the arguments. He's trying to keep it as basic, really, right. as he possibly can. For Paul, it's all about the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's so, all um, about Jesus. You know, it, it's not, uh, even though he was the most educated person in his world, that's never his, his plan of attack mm -hmm. and just sharing the gospel. Yeah. And so Paul wants to once again reiterate. And you don't see this any right. other letters that right. Paul writes. He wants to reiterate again that he didn't take any money from them. Right. Although the Macedonians did right. help support him, right. he didn't take anything from the Corinthians. And not only did he not take anything, he's not going to take right. anything from right. them. He's, He'll keep making those tents. That's right. <laughs> and, and he preaches for free for them. Right. And so if that's a crime, he's guilty of right. that. Right. <laughs> And so he says, beware uh, of the false teachings and tendencies. And we ourselves yeah. need to do that today because we often look at Scripture yeah. and say that was then and this is now. And we forget that we are so easily swayed by selfish gain and uh, our own glory mm -hmm. and even jealousy. Right. And we right. see that take place yeah. in a lot of churches. And that's all that Paul's talking about here. So. What's old is new again. Right. 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 <laughs> it just comes back around in a different yeah, wrapper. Yeah. All right. A quick summary of chapters 10 and 11. Gentleness is a virtue which needs to be rediscovered. And we talked about this last time. Um, you know, they perceived Paul as gentle in person, but, but harsh <laughs> in his letters. And we always just perceive Paul as harsh. Yes. Paul is gentle. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, he kept showing up in Corinth when a lot of us would have stopped. Right. <laughs> um, so, so gentleness in responding to critics and responding to people who are disagreeing or, or who are struggling, mm -hmm. you know, is, is a, great, a great thing that we need to get back to. And spiritual battles must be fought with spiritual weapons, right. not with the weapons of the world. Right. Uh, Donna mentioned in her prayer on Sunday, you know, some of those spiritual weapons are just being still, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. taking a breath. Yeah. Reflecting on scripture, uh, not, and we make fun about posting on social media, but uh, before social media, there, there was this thing called the telephone. Yes. And um, <laughs> there were times, and, and I'm old enough, and we both are old enough as pastors that uh, something got out on the telephone mm -hmm. that by the time it was at a mm -hmm. point where we could correct mm -hmm. it, uh, we had almost called the whole church. Right. Yeah. Right. So. 
So let, let's just not make it about social media. It's a lot right. easier to do that today, right, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. And God demands obedience. This is right. something we like to push under yeah. the rug today, yeah. but God still demands obedience. Yeah. Yeah. And then our mission field, it's not small. Right. Our mission field is the world. Is always the world. Yeah. Uh, and that always draws us full. Mm -hmm. So here are our closing questions today. Um, how do we measure success in God's work? Because that's mm. ultimately the battle in Corinth. Right. Uh, the, the, the ones that are criticizing Paul are saying he, he's not the measure of success. And mm -hmm. Paul says, no, no, no. <laughs> the measure of success is the, is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So how do we measure success in God's work? And then why do we serve Christ? Because those folks in Corinth were serving Christ out of some motives that were not right. Christ-like. And so how do we serve Christ and why do we serve Christ today? So give us some feedback. Let us know what you want for the next study. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Hans, close us in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are so patient with us. And we ask, Lord, that you would use us for your glory and your honor. Help us, Heavenly Father, to work with one another, to be an encouragement and uplifter to one another. We pray, Lord, that you would lead us and you would guide us into, your, into being obedient to your word. And this we ask in your name. Amen. Have a great night.